I'm Nikki Strong, and this is VOA1, The Hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, you will hear reports from Dan Novak, Dan Friedel, and Katie Weaver. Later, John Russell presents this week's Everyday Grammar Lesson. Then, we look ahead to tomorrow's topic for Ask a Teacher. But first, here is Dan Novak. Seven World Central Kitchen workers died in an Israeli airstrike on April 1st in Gaza. The killings disrupted a flow of badly needed food into Gaza as international organizations warn of famine. World Central Kitchen, an American charity, has grown into one of the world's most recognized food relief organizations. The group, in partnership with the United Arab Emirates, had just delivered a cargo ship with over 360 metric tons of canned goods from Cyprus to Gaza. About 90 metric tons were delivered before the charity suspended operations after the attack. The rest was being taken back to Cyprus, a Cypriot government official said. Chef and restaurant owner Jose Andres founded World Central Kitchen in 2010. His goal is to provide immediate food relief to disaster areas. The organization gained international recognition for its work in Puerto Rico in 2017, feeding victims of Hurricane Maria. World Central Kitchen also operates in Ukraine and has provided more than 100 million meals to refugees there, the group's website says. Andres has ties to the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden. He serves as co-chair of the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition. In a statement Tuesday night, Biden said he had spoken with Andres to express condolences for the deaths of these courageous aid workers and to express my continued support for his organization and its work around the world. Biden said Israel was not doing enough to protect aid workers. This conflict has been one of the worst in recent memory in terms of how many aid workers have been killed, he said. The loss of World Central Kitchen will harm humanitarian efforts in Gaza. The killings may also represent a change in Andres's public view of the Israeli government. On Tuesday, he strongly criticized the Israeli military. The Israeli government needs to stop this indiscriminate killing. It needs to stop restricting humanitarian aid stop killing civilians and aid workers, and stop using food as a weapon, Andres wrote on the social media service X. His organization blamed the attack on the Israel Defense Forces. He said the military had coordinated over the movement of the cars carrying the workers as they left northern Gaza late Monday. Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi is Israel's military chief. He said the strike was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in very complex conditions. It shouldn't have happened. Video after the attack showed a vehicle with the charity's name printed across its top to make it identifiable from the air. The victims of the attack included three British nationals, an Australian, a Polish national, an American-Canadian dual citizen, and a Palestinian, 
according to hospital records. I'm Dan Novak. People around the world are worried that water for drinking, cooking, and cleaning is getting harder to find. Many believe changes in their climate are affecting their ability to get water. The problem exists in places such as Corning, California, Lima, Peru, Jakarta, Indonesia, Ras al Morocco, Makueni County, Kenya, and Bawal, India. The United Nations says 2.2 billion people worldwide do not have safely managed drinking water. In Lima, Justina Flores lives with no running water. She is a 50-year-old grandmother who gets water from the government. With the supply, she washes her family's clothing by hand and then uses what is left to bathe her dog. The government gives water to 1.5 million of the country's poorest people. Big water trucks make their way up hills to get to places where people need it. Flores tries to limit her water use. She owns a washing machine, but it uses too much water. By washing clothes by hand, she saves about 45 liters. The family gets 3,000 liters per week. Official information says in wealthier areas with running water, Families use an average of almost 12,000 liters per week. Flores has worked in some of those homes. She said there, people can take a bath every day. She said in her area of Lima, people can only wash themselves two times per week. In Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, People say it is difficult to get clean water. Devi Putri Ekasari is 37. She has three children. Since she was a girl, she has had to purchase water from sellers who work in her low-income neighborhood. While the government installed water pipes and pumps, the water does not always come. Sari said, if the water did flow, she is not sure she would drink it. It's not healthy, she said. It's filled with bacteria that will make you sick. She said it also smells like chemicals. The World Health Organization says she is right. Seven of ten households in Indonesia use drinking water that contains the dangerous bacteria known as E. coli. As a result, she and many other Indonesians have been buying water all their lives. They either use large, refillable containers or single-use bottles. This creates a lot of waste. It's the option we have, she said. In the North African country of Morocco, a river flows next to the farm, where Mimoun Nadori's family has grown fruits and vegetables for a long time. But when he tastes the water from the river today, he makes a bad face. The water is salty. He said it was not that way in the past. Back then, as he said, everything was green, We drank from the river and washed with the river. We made a life with it. His land is along the Muloya River, 
which does not flow like it did in the past. Dams were built and water is pumped upstream. That means Nadori's land gets less water. The water hardly moves, which permits seawater to come in. Nadori now has to bring water in for the chickens he raises. He once raised cows, but he discovered the cows were drinking from the tainted water. The cows died. He admitted there is more than one reason for the lack of water. We won't lie and say the reason is only humans or drought. It's both, he said. We don't know how to use water, and we waste a lot of water. Fred and Robin Imfeld once had no problem filling their swimming pool and watering the plants at their home in rural California. But two years ago, their well in the town of Corning went dry. The pool is empty now and the plants are brown. Across California, wells have dried up because people use too much water, and there is not enough rain to replace what is used. The supply of groundwater is low. The Imfelds want to drill a new, deeper well, but it would cost a lot. $25,000. Until they can drill the new well, they depend on water from the state. Two times each month, they receive a water tank that contains almost 10,000 liters. They use the water to wash themselves, wash dishes, and clean their clothes. They get a different shipment of 113 liters of water every two weeks that they use for drinking and cooking. When they need more water, Imfeld takes all the containers he has to a friend's home a few kilometers away and fills them. He said the worries about water add to the family's personal concerns. They are worried all the time about their own lives and the water. We're just being emotionally drained, he said. Joyce Mule used to walk two hours each day to find water in Makueni County, Kenya. There are few water pipes in her southeastern village. One way to get water is by digging holes in a local riverbed and retrieving the collected water. But in 2012, she and the others in the village changed to a different method. They now catch water that runs off rocks 30 or more meters above the ground. The rock catchment method directs the water through a containing wall and smaller rocks that help to clean it. Eventually, the water flows into a pipe and into a large tank that is much closer to the village. Her plants and trees are now healthy. There is more fruit, and cows are producing more milk. Her life is better now. We used to think the rocks were worthless, she said, but now we see the benefits. Ram Krishan Malawat is 52. He remembers the days when people in his village near New Delhi did not have to dig deep wells to get water. They only needed to walk 10 kilometers to find a fast flowing river. Water was no concern. Now the river is dry and the water is more than 70 meters below the ground. We are forced to dig deeper with every passing year, he said. But he must keep digging in order to get water for his farm. He grows mustard, corn, and other grains. When he does get to the water, it is not as clean. 
the water contains chemicals from the ground, including fluoride. Drilling for water is common in India. The United Nations says India drills and pumps more groundwater than the United States and China combined. There is more need for water as India grows. The Indian population is the world's largest and it continues to grow. The people need homes and jobs. Every time a new structure is built, it causes runoff and less water can seep into the ground. Water just flows away, Malawat said. He noted that the auto industry is now bigger than farming in the area. I worry sometimes that in 10 to 15 years, there will be no good water available for farming in my town, he said. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Katie Weaver. VOA Learning English has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions and experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. everyday grammar, we will take a delicious trip to East Asia. We will taste wonderful and perhaps unfamiliar foods, if only in our imagination. We will also learn about some of the details of writing, including common spelling and punctuation mistakes. In a recent everyday grammar, we explored how to talk about a national dish, we asked our listeners and readers around the world to write to us about their national dish. In today's lesson, we give feedback on some of that writing. Let's start with Japan. Here is part of what Kaori wrote. Chirashi sushi is the national dish of Japan. It is a sweet and sour dish that consists of rice, shrimp, eggs, dried gourd, vinegar, salt, and sugar. In May 5th, we eat the traditional sweet called kashiwa mochi. It is a sweet and sticky small snack that consists of rice powder, small red beans, and sugar. Kauri used the structures that we discussed in our previous lesson. The writing included adjectives such as sweet and sour, the phrasal verb consist of, and nouns such as rice, shrimp, and eggs. We were especially interested to read about dried gourd, an ingredient that is not common in America. Our main suggestion is to replace the short word in with on, as in, on May 5th, we eat the traditional sweet. Remember, we use on for exact dates. So, we say, for example, on January 1st, or on September 27th. Next, we go to China to learn about two popular dishes. Here we notice a similarity between the United States and China. If you asked Americans to write about a national dish, you would likely get different answers. In the same way, we received different answers about a national dish of China. Here is part of John's message. 
Chicken soup is a national dish of China. It's a light soup that consists of hens and medicine plants. Most part of chicken soup is hen's meat because it tastes finer. The other ingredients of it are Chinese medicine plants, such as dang gui. Of course, we need some flavorings to make it tastes more delicious. Soybeans, peppers, ginger, and garlic are necessary to the soup. John's message is clear and easy to understand. That said, we have a few suggested changes. In terms of grammar, we should remove the noun form medicine and instead use the adjective medicinal, as in medicinal plants. We could also use a more exact noun such as herb, as in medicinal herbs. We should also replace the short word to with for, as in necessary for the soup. We could also make a few small stylistic changes. For example, in the first sentence, we could use the noun chicken in place of hen, although a hen makes it clear that the bird is a female. Here is one way we might update the message. Chicken soup is a national dish of China. It is a light soup that consists of chicken and medicinal herbs. Most of the chicken soup has meat from the female chicken, or hen, because it tastes finer and softer than meat from the male chicken. The other ingredients of chicken soup are Chinese medicinal herbs such as dangui. Of course, we need some flavorings to make it taste more delicious. Soybean, peppers, ginger, and garlic are necessary for the soup. Next, here is part of what Ming wrote to us. Meizai Koro is the national dish of China. It is a salty dish that consists of pork belly, fermented red tofu sauce, dry mizuna, soybean sauce, salt, and species such as Sichuan peppercorn and star anise. Meizai is the mizuna's pronunciation in Chinese. Ming wrote a nice message that is clear and easy to understand. We suggest a few changes for some of the nouns. Instead of source, we want to use the word sauce, and instead of species, we would use spices. So the second sentence might say fermented red tofu sauce, soybean sauce, and salt and spices. The final sentences might go like this. It is a salty dish that consists of pork belly, fermented red tofu sauce, dry mizuna, soybean sauce, salt and spices, such as Sichuan peppercorn and star anise. Meizai is the Chinese pronunciation for mizuna. We can take a few lessons from the messages that we received. The first is that writing does not need to be perfect to be understandable. All the messages had nice, clear structures and were easy to understand for a native English speaker. The main issues were in the details, the spelling of nouns and adjectives, punctuation, and other small things. Our recommendation is to carefully look over these details several times in future writing efforts. We will give more writing feedback on messages from our fans around the world in coming lessons. We will learn more about national dishes from other areas of the world, including Europe and Africa. If you have a question or comment about today's lesson, feel free to send us an email at learningenglish 
at voanews.com. I'm John Russell. just heard this week's Everyday Grammar lesson. John Russell is here now to talk a little more about it. Hi, John. Welcome back. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for having me on the show. In this week's lesson, you have some writing feedback. I'm curious to know, what did you learn by reading the messages people sent in? I always learn a lot when our listeners write to us. I was not familiar with any of the dishes that were described in today's lesson. So, in addition to reading the messages, I also looked up images of the dishes. Was there a particular dish you would like to try? I would like to try all of them. Next week's lesson will give feedback on other dish descriptions. In one of your recommendations in the lesson, you suggested you might use the term chicken instead of hen. Why is that? That point is not really about grammar. It is more about style and communicating to a certain audience. If you look at American cookbooks, they almost always use the broader term chicken. American cookbooks do not generally specify the kind of chicken. So you recommended changing hen to chicken for the sake of sounding natural to an American. That's right. Language is funny. We have grammar, but then we also have other considerations. Style, word choice, and so on. Well, thanks for talking with us today, John, and thank you for that lesson. See you next time. Ask a Teacher, Gina Bennett answers a question we received on our YouTube channel. The English learner wants to know the difference between different from and different than. Here is Gina reading the question. Question to English teachers. What is correct to say? Different from or different than? In the example below, which is correct? Cost of life has a different meaning than cost of living. Cost of life has a different meaning from cost of living. Be sure to listen to tomorrow's program to hear Gina's answer and explanation. That's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. Thank you.